Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. Today, I'm going to share with you the steps for this two-part video. One part is being done here on Deliberately Creative. The second part, which is the embroidery part, will be done over on my second channel, Stephanie B. Creativity. You want to check out both channels to get the whole process. Today, I am going to use Inktense Blocks on a stretched canvas. I'm doing this in a collaboration with myself because I have two channels. I have Deliberately Creative and I have Stephanie B. Creativity. Over on Stephanie B. Creativity, I do things like embroidery and knitting. I'm going to paint this with the Inktense blocks on a primed stretch canvas. And then on my second channel, Stephanie B. Creativity, I am going to be doing some embroidery of flowers to add more depth and dimension to this. It is a mixed media piece that way, and I'm really excited. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this using my Inktense blocks right here. I've got some water and a paintbrush and the blocks. I'm going to be grabbing the blocks and starting to lay color down first just with the blocks, coloring straight on the uh, canvas. I am going to do kind of a sunset landscape background. What I want is the sun, kind of like that, in the background with some clouds and things, but I want it to be more oranges and deeper purple and such going down behind the hills and then have the foreground with the flowers, kind of a wildflower meadow. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and start putting some color in here. I do wanna put my yellow in the area where I want my sun to be. I'm gonna have it be kind of big. I'm putting quite a bit of color on here. About like that. I will be using a little bit of gouache. Let's see here, I think I'll grab this this orange and kind of put some of that around here. And some of this reddish orangey color, I think I'm gonna put in, it is much more red that's okay. I'm not going to put the purple on here until after I have gotten this layer wet. So then I'm going to grab some of that yellow and take it down here where it's going to kind of feed into the green that's down low for the background. I'm going to do kind of an olive -y green. Oh yeah, that's a landscapey green. Sort of like that. Right now, this is looking like a total mess and you're going to go, but that looks like something a little kid would do. And right now, yeah, it does. It very much looks like something that a kid could do. I bet you you could do this with kids and have a blast with it. I am going to go ahead and grab another sort of natural looking green. This one's a little bit darker. Put that up high on the, the back of that hill and maybe a little bit here. Kind of coming down in. Oh, that's pretty. That, that works. It's kind of another olive landscapey green. We're going to go ahead and start getting this wet. I am using just a round, this is a number eight faux squirrel Zen art. And first off, I'm going to go ahead and get the sun wet. Ooh, that's pretty. 
I am working on top of a cloth because that way I can just wipe my brush off and I don't have to worry about finding a spot for it. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and get in here. Oh, look at that red. And look how this is just bleeding out. I'm not worried about making anything perfect right now. I'm just trying to get these colors sort of worked in. You know, you don't want to use your best watercolor brushes on a primed stretched canvas, but these are nice for doing this because it holds a lot of water. It helps to melt that, those colors in. Ooh, this is looking cool. I'm not worried about if I get it a little bit murky down here, it's sort of where the, the sunlight is started to work its way down. If I end up with a bit of that darker color starting to come in at the top, that's okay. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look at that. When I picked up, there was so much water on here. We started getting this drippiness going on. Some of that is really cool. And some of it, I think I'm going to work my way out of. Ooh, this is fun. I think I have found one of my new favorite things to play with. Ooh. So if you go over this too much, you can work your way all the way back down, apparently, to the canvas. All right, that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and get this background sort of worked in. You know, this is like that, those distant tree lined hills. I'm going to get some of this lighter color so I can kind of push up in. Ooh, that's kind of cool. This is neat. I, I am enjoying this. I'm hoping this experiment works. I'm hoping that the, um, that the embroidery that I do on the, to finish it, to make all the flowers and such, I hope that that works. I want this to stand alone though. I want it to be able to stand alone on its own. So I'm, I'm going to try and finish it somewhat. Let's just sort of get this hill going up a little bit more. I don't want it to be a flat line. There we go. This is, this is way more fun than I was thinking. I am going to go back in. I, I'm going to have to fix this part right here. I think I'm going to put a cloud going up in that. So it's got that glow behind it. So I'm not worried about make, you know, that being a mistake or anything like that. I think we need to embrace the serendipity that's happening here. Ooh, 
kind of like that. Maybe I'll put some little wavy bits in that. Giving me some places to put some more, some more embroidery maybe, some texture. That's cool. Oh, that, that, wow, yeah. This is an experiment. I've never done this before. We're, we're going on a journey here together. I think I'm going to grab some of this brighter green. Kind of work a little bit of this brighter green right down in front. And maybe on top of some of that wet area. You know, give a little more texture. It's going to mix in and change the color as we're doing it. So that's cool. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Get that wet. It's not going to be as bright as it looked like it was going to be. Yeah, we're still, that, that red is still dripping down through there. I'm okay. Are you okay? Are you okay with having things just sort of happening on your canvas or are you somebody who really needs to maintain control? I'm enjoying the serendipity, the unexpected the option to just let it go, let it do, and really not worry. I'm going to put some up and down lines here. So I'll have like stems and places here to put some flowers when I do the embroidery knowing that I'm not going to be able to embroider about half an inch all the way around because there's the wood stretchers. They get in the way I can't embroider through the wood. All right, I'm just going to get this edge. Okay, so this right now is kind of my out of focus background. Wow, that is actually, wow, looking so cool. Okay, so that right there makes me think of a vineyard off in, the vi off in the very background. I live in Washington State, and in the eastern side of Washington, there are these golden rolling hills, and there's vineyards. There's a lot of vineyards. There's a lot of grape growing along with all of the other cool agriculture that goes on. That looks good. I'm not worried about if I'm drawing through some of these areas. I'm trying to just give myself a lot of texture that I can do some embroidery with, but I'm also trying to give myself some places that I can Ah, 
Yes, I'm gonna dry this, I think. Okay, something I, I'm looking at this and going, I want to get some more drama in this sky. It needs to get some dark purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this really dark purple. And I'm going to get some drama in this sky. This is a violet blue purpley color. If you'll notice here, when it dries, it takes on um, a softer tone because the colors are not uh, staying true. They are picking up some of the mutedness from the, I, I think from the surface preparation on here. So, you know, you just, you do what you gotta do. To make this work, I'm just going to keep putting layers on till it looks like what I want it to look like. I'm putting drama in. I'm adding some deeper tones. It is going to end up with white gouache on here also. I'm adding color in where I think I need it. I don't want to put too much. So now I'm going to go in and get some dark coming down into that. Ooh, that's really rich. And it really, really, really is going to be interesting when I put white on here. Gonna get that sky deepening up. That's almost like a um, dioxine purple, I think. Dioxazine purple. Just get that wet. I think I might start bouncing some of that up and down so it starts feeling a little more cloud-like. A little more atmospheric. Some of it could be dragging out. Ooh, that's pretty. This is all an experiment. <laughs> it is all experimental. It is all just figuring out what I'm looking at, how it's working together. Those are super dark clouds, but they're gonna be the shadows. I like it. I like what I like the drama that's happening here. You know, yours is not going to look exactly the same. And I think that's what's so cool about this. I do not expect you to make something that looks exactly like mine. I want you to make something that looks exactly like yours. that. I like having that little top edge. Let's suck up some of that moisture. Now, some of this is lifting off from the previous layer. If you're working on something that's raw fabric versus the, uh, you know, primed surface here, the prime surface is sort of holding that up off of the fabric. It's not allowing it to, to go completely in. It's staying on top of it. So it's going to stain the surface, but it's not going to, it's not going to keep it, um, 
attached. So this is a lot like watercolor right now. And if you drop water on here, don't wipe it with your finger because apparently it will pick up. <laughs> and since I'm not so keen on all of that being so dark, I'm going to go in and pick up some of it. Oh, look at that. You can pick up some Oh, I like that. This is this is so much fun to experiment with and see what's going to happen. I'm not I don't know what's going to happen, you know. I don't know what the end result is going to be. I'm letting the the whim of the water. And the pigments kind of do their thing. I want to pull some of that off to the side there a little bit. I like how the orange is sort of pulling through. I'm trying to sort of work back. So it's it's getting glazed, it's getting stained, it's getting highlights and and lowlights and oh so neat. Getting that up into the sky, like that. That's looking cool. I'm going to dry this. I don't want, I love that red kind of column going up through there. That's, oh gosh, that's just making me happy. So here's where we are right now. That's looking pretty cool. I'm not too worried about the edges. I, I think I'm just going to go back in and paint the edges all black at the end. Not worried about it right now. I do want to put some of the darker green back in here into the shadows. Kind of back along that top edge just so it's farther away. I'm just going to take that one all the way to the dark. I think that layer is just going to be dark. Don't put too much of the ink tents on here. If you do, you'll end up with a huge puddly mess. And if you put too much water on, you'll end up with a huge puddly mess. My brush was really, really wet. I'm going along here and I'm kind of pushing up and down to give a little bit of texture to that top edge of the hill. And then I'm going to pull across back and forth. Maybe allow a little bit of some light to maintain a difference of color. Just putting some lines back in for that kind of vineyard-ish feel. Again, we're getting, we're getting depth, we're getting texture. This is all just the ink tents. Now, I don't know how uh, light fast this is. I've not done a light fast test on it. 
uh, this is a project that I'm doing because I'm just having fun doing it. If you want it to be a permanent lasting type of thing, make sure you use materials that are light fast. Some dark green. I'm trying to put some darker green in here for shadow because I'm going to use lighter colors for my embroidery floss probably, but I do need to get this sort of set, activated. So I want to take my wet brush over the dry pigment to start activating it. Oh wow, look at all the texture and the different colors. I love that. Oh. Wow. Okay. I'm going to dry this. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Okay. A little bit of white. So I've got some um, artist squash. This is titanium white by M. Graham. And I'm just going to drop a little bit of that right here on this tin. Just like that. Get some gouache on here. It's going to pick up some of the color that's already on here. I'm just going to mush it on. I'm just I, really and truly, I am playing. I am experimenting. I am not worried about it being perfect because you know what perfection is something that people strive for but you really can't obtain perfection you can you know go for the appearance of but it's not ever going to be truly perfect and that's okay I like having that dark in the background and having that darker color that was over the light color because this is giving me all kinds of variation in here. Look at that. Kind of Maybe some fogginess down here low, right behind the hill. There we go. A little bit of that light coming down. Okay, this this is something I could keep playing and playing and playing. 
I do want to darken up that little bit a little bit more and I think I'm going to take some of this sort of brownie red into it maybe. Just touches, not a, not a lot of it. There, just about that much. And see some of this, you are going to, you know, pick the colors back up again. Even when you're putting more color down, it's very interesting how working on top of a canvas like this, the ink tense does reactivate to a certain, certain extent, like the gouache. And it is really interesting how you get that play of color going on where it's like stained down and it's not lifting all the way to the white canvas. I like that. Put a little bit of this brown. Not a lot. I hope you enjoyed this journey into painting on a stretched canvas with ink tents blocks. Remember to check out Stephanie B Creativity where I am going to go in and do embroidered flowers down here on this canvas. Remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon.